So there's a lot of confusion over these two workbenches. Each offers a workflow that has similarities and differences in their usage, but under the hood, they are basically the same. Geometry needs to be created to construct any 3D model. 2D geometry, whether it's the form of Sketcher, Draft Workbench, or any other workbenches, are extruded, revolved, lofted, etc., to create a shape. This creates either a solid, compound, or surface, depending on the geometry used. It actually can create more, such as edge and 2D geometry, but this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Let's look at some of the rules that the part workbench has. A single line or wire, if extruded, will create a surface. It is not closed. That means the number of edges connected together and enclosed in a single shape, i.e. something like a rectangle. And also it's not filled to give depth. To create that as a solid, we need to use a secondary operation such as an offset or even extruding along another axis. If we add three more lines to the sketch, so we enclose that shape, we have the option when we extrude to make it solid. If we take that shape and create multiple combinations of that in a single sketch, or we say we take the product from a Rayner sketch, we get something that's known as a compound, which is basically a collection of geometry. So the part workbench has some simple rules in its workflow. If we take this simple example of what we've just been talking about, the solid created from the extrude, if we wanted to add something like a cylinder on top of that, then we attach it to one of the faces and extrude it. That cylinder that's been attached to that face is not automatically fused to that main body. To make a fusion, we take both those shapes and boolean them together, and that will create that fusion. In the case that the cylinder is embedded into the body, then a cut is also an option, which will remove that material. If these two shapes do not touch in any way or intersect, then a compound can be created. You may be wondering, well, what's the use of a compound object? Geometry can be collected together into a compound, and that compound can be fused or cut away from a solid, or vice versa, or even from other compounds. This opens up the possibilities of, say, ribs on boats, fins on cooling systems, etc. Geometry in the form of sketch polylines, rectangles, etc., or the draft workbench equivalent can also be used for the extrusion and also the cut intersections, etc. This allows the part workbench to be extremely flexible and forgiving, allowing compound solids and surfaces to be optionally fused or cut after creation. Now, if we compare that with the part design and take what we've been talking about, firstly, we need to remove the rule about being able to create open geometry. The part design only allows closed geometry. Secondly, forget the rule about compounds. Part design does not allow multiple bodies. So if you create two rectangles in the same sketch for the base feature, you will not be able to proceed. But if we create a sketch of two rectangles on, say, a face of a base feature, then this is allowed. And there is a reason why. Because it's attached to the base feature of that object, they're touching or intersecting. And when we pad or pocket that, the part design will automatically create a fusion or cut afterwards. So those Boolean operations that if we did it in the part workbench, where we would have to extrude, then place the objects together and then Boolean them, that whole operation there is done automatically. So whenever you get that error message where it complains about cannot create a multiple body or multiple bodies not allowed, that's because there's a gap between your sketch and the body that you're creating a pad or a pocket against. From that, you can see the part design is saving us time and making your job easier by removing the need to position product of a 2D geometry extrude that you want to cut away from the main feature by just allowing you to sketch on the face and tell FreeCAD to remove that material without going through the need of moving geometry into place. But the only thing about this is that this restricts that workflow, as all the operations require that geometry to either be touching or intersecting. And that removes the option to make such products as compounds. When I model in FreeCAD, it's important to think about some of the following. Do I want to create a surface? Do I want to create a compound? or do I want to prototype and work in an organic way without a plan? If the answer is yes to any of those, I will look at using the part workbench. Whereas if I want to create a single solid model, or I want to create a number of solid models in separate containers, or if I want to use a compound object as the base feature and join these together and create a single body, i.e. three rectangles in a single sketch can be extruded in the part workbench, and then pulled in as a base feature in the part design, the next operation after that must join all three rectangles. 
then I would use either the part or part design. Now where the part design comes into its own is if I want to quickly create a solid model and I have a full out plan. Or do I want to work like the leading edge cap packages and work in a more traditional way of that feature based modeling? Then I would use the part design. Part Workbench is feature rich and can accomplish the tricky modeling side of things, but you will be creating more operations which nest the original operation within, tends to create a somewhat messy history. Whereas the part design offers the speed to accomplish the modeling task with less clicks and mouse movements. It also has a much cleaner linear history. As said, it is limited compared to the part workbench. So you may have some other rules that you go by if you've been using FreeCAD for a while. I would love to hear them in the comments and it would really help the community. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.